So today though, I'm super excited because this is an area, I don't have kids. So it's an area that I know about because I'm kind of a geek when it comes to um, education, but I don't have kids and I've not been a teacher or in the educational space to see it work in real time. So I love the fact that I have Tiffany Blassingame from um, Simple, Simple Organization. It's one of those ones you gotta get the word choices right. Um, and she's she has a background in education um, and productivity, and has created some tools for helping people, uh, especially students, but their parents as well, to um, connect how uh, staying organized in school is going to transfer to a long-term life skill. And you know, I think she's probably more of an education geek than me. Is that how we met? <laughs> I feel like, did we meet on the education committee? Were you on the education committee at all? We met on the diversity committee. Just the diversity committee. Okay. I couldn't remember. Um, I just knew there was that connection too with education. So um, welcome, Tiffany. I'm so glad to have you here. Um, I want to hear a little bit about why you chose organizing because you did education first. And then what prompted you to shift your focus into specifically student organizing? Yeah, I'm super excited to be here and sharing about student organizing. Um, I am an educator, mm -hmm. and I, I still believe that I organize through e education, more training and coaching versus um, physical organizing. Mm -hmm. um, and as a teacher, I just began to study the neuroscience behind organizing and time management mm -hmm. for children, especially seeing a transition from what happens with um, in their early years of, of education, in elementary school or primary school up to upper elementary. There's a, you know, usually a shift there about what they're what we expect them to do independently and what they should need help for. And mm -hmm. then a really big transition to middle school. Our yep. parents are always talking about that. And then, of course, there's high school and college where you really want them to manage their time, be productive, you know, um, all those mm -hmm. things. And they're like off in La La Land, not really worried about any of that. And then these are our workers that come um, mm -hmm. out as either entrepreneurs or working in businesses um, and for organizations. And they sometimes lack that productivity. And I also feel like schools have stopped teaching organizational skills. And so that's where I yeah. came in thinking, oh, like parents still need support. Um, mm -hmm. I started doing some trainings at my um, at the school that I was in at that time and then trainings for other um, schools and their PTA. And it just kind of evolved into um, wanting to help as many students and families as I could. Yeah, I remember um, when I was a kid, we had library science classes, like one module every single year. Yeah. Like they would be like, here's what is going to set you up for success this year. Here's how you're going to learn this year. You're going to learn how to use the library, too. So here's how the library works and here's how the time management works. And I was shocked um, when I started my organizing business, like five or six of my first clients were teachers. And I would walk into their classrooms and be like, Wait, mm -hmm. you you teach in this environment? Like they were so packed with things. Yes. That it was like, how can a kid pay attention to anything? And so much situational ADD, I think, mm -hmm. probably results. Um, and so I'm super excited that you pinpointed that there's there's a connection there, um, not just physical clutter, but but the time management thing. Because that that's the other thing. Oh my God, there's so many kids that they right. reach the the um I have a lot of friends that run businesses and they get very frustrated at how many of their newer employees are late all the time. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh my God, just show up for work, people. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. Showing up, 80% yeah. of the thing, whatever well, you it is. Bring up, it's such a good point about, you know, um, walking in the classrooms and like things mm -hmm. being kind of all over the place. There's no labels, like where do things mm -hmm. go? Is kids unfinished work over here, there, everywhere. Um, yeah. it, I've been so excited about um, supporting student organization and what that looks like in schools. Mm -hmm. 
also what that looks like at home, that right. I opened my own uh, micro school where we specifically yeah. invest time in supporting students' executive function skills. Um, so that's oh, been great. Cool. It's called the Ferguson School. Um, and we're located in Metro Atlanta, but um, we have about six students now and we're growing a, a couple of students every month. Oh, that's fantastic. I want to talk a little bit more about that when we come back, but we are going to have to take a quick break. I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network. I'm talking to Tiffany Blassingame of um, simple organization. I don't know why I always want to say simply instead of simple. Um, and um, about how to help support students in being organized so they can carry that life skill throughout their um, education and then into their, their life on the other end of it. So we'll be right back. The free one minute mail solution works for email too. And you can download it at the link below or over there. Maybe it's a, the link. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network. And uh, Simple Organization has shared Tiffany Blassingame with me today. Um, and she has this cool school, micro school in Atlanta, or near Atlanta, I guess, um, that helps students learn about organization. So it's that life skill that's going to serve them through their whole life. And I want to find out more about how you got that into the school. Is it a separate entity or is it an extracurricular at the school you are working at? Or how does that work? Um, no, it's its own um, nonprofit, um, mm -hmm. the Ferguson School. We um, have our, our a location inside of a church in downtown yeah. Decatur, Georgia. And um, we have our own governing board. We've got our own teachers. And so we specifically look at setting up classroom environments that mm -hmm. um, foster time management, sorting, categorizing, um, transitioning and thinking flexibly, um, mm. you know, things don't go the way you expect it. You know, how do we coach and model um, for students to shift in that mm -hmm. way? So really supporting those um, executive function skills. Right now we have students in grades kindergarten through second grade, and then nice. we will add a grade each year until fifth grade. So oh, we'll that's great. Primary skills and then moving up to those upper elementary skills. So it's a full curriculum that the organization stuff is just built in. Yes. Yes. Oh. So we teach um, <clears throat> reading, math, science, social studies. They have art, music, Spanish every day, PE every day. It's a great, well-rounded um, curriculum sounds, and an educational program. Sounds a lot like school used to be. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> We just went back to the basics. When we learned <laughs> critical thinking and, I, you know, I did my early education in, in Montessori school till yes. first grade. And so there was, you know, put your toys away in the cubbies, you know, right. now we're going to use this stuff and right. then you put it away. And then, you, so um, I'm blessed that I got a lot of that education early on, but I remember yeah. being shocked at some of my classmates who didn't understand that concept. Mm -hmm. and would put the crayons in the box wrong. But that was a different issue. <laughs> you were an organizer early on. <laughs> yes. Um, so that's great. Um, but tell me what, let's let's talk a little bit about more more about the specifics. So what, what do you think is some of the biggest obstacles you encounter with, with young people about organization? Um, I feel like... First is really understanding executive function skills for parents and for teachers, mm -hmm. understanding mm -hmm. what that what that is and what that looks like. Um, yeah. I've spent a lot of time, you know, reading and um, learning more about neuroscience and the research behind learning and your brain. Um, what most parents uh, don't really realize, and teachers too, is that um, when kids are younger, when they are um, toddlers, even in preschool, we do so much of let's share. Oh, this didn't work out. Let's figure out, you know, how to make it better. Where do the toys go? You mm -hmm. know, let's sing our cleanup song. We do all of that. 
Yeah. Uh, and then they get into elementary school and there's more kids and like so much going on around them. But the teachers may still be trying to do a little bit of turn your work in here or do this there. There You may see some labeling. But by the time they get to um, upper elementary, it's just, oh, you should know that by now. Oh, you should know that by now. And really, they still need that support. Um, yeah, it takes a while to learn and absorb and transform in terms of resiliency and recovering from a little setback and all, right. how that plays into the the overall time management mm-hmm. and productivity and how different people think differently. Right. And making yeah. a plan for, okay, if it happens again, oh, I have a plan. Like, this is where I'll keep this so that I don't lose it again or, you right. know. Yes. Do you find that sometimes parents get um, or lose patience when their kid doesn't think the same way they do. And so they don't understand why it's not working out. <laughs> yeah, particularly in middle school and high school, right? Mm-hmm. Because they feel that, oh, you're in middle school or you're in high school right now, you should be able to do it. But, um, you know, during that time of adolescence, you know, their brain is only about 80% developed. Um, mm-hmm. And part of that is that executive function, that insight, that impulse control, um, making a plan, you know, dividing an assignment um, mm-hmm. and chunking it so that you're not waiting to the last minute to to do it. And so because yeah. their brains are still developing, you know, parents just see this tall kid. <laughs> right. <But I laughs> they should know sometimes. it already. Right. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Did you ever walk them through it? Did you right. ever help them figure out what resonates with them? Like right. what what's the the disconnect there sometimes? I know. I have a lot of I work with adults and so most of my clients are like, I know I should know this. I'm like, Well, how would you know it? Mm-hmm. Well, other people know it. And I'm like, Well, they took the time to learn it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same thing. You're just catching them early and starting early on in the process, which I think is fabulous. Right, right. And another big obstacle is the concept of time. Um, Mm -hmm. If you think about it, um, everything is so digital. We don't really use analog clocks or watches with the, with the, and so kids have, have for, they've, they've never learned what five minutes actually feels like, right? Like they don't, they've never had to figure that out with the, with the clock, you know. And they've so never like, sat they've through never the boring passed. class and watched the seconds tick by. Right, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, it's, it's interesting, but it is, it's about how our brain actually processes new information, right? And when you look at an analog sweep, I mean, there's time timer, which I don't even think is as great as watching a secondhand sweep. Right, right. Because it gives you past, present, and future kind of all at once instead of digital, which is just present. Right. Even if you have, like, I have a digital clock right here that has seconds counting down, but it doesn't have the same vibe of Right. how much closer is that to where I'm ending up. All right. I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network. I'm speaking with Tiffany today about organizing students, and we have to take a quick break, but we will be right back. The Streamline Clutter Solution online course will help you gain control of your stuff and space. What are you waiting for? The links are around here somewhere. And I'm talking with Tiffany about student organizing. And we were just giggling a little bit about, um, you know, talking more about the the sweep, the second hand on that clock and how it can help align our um, spatial awareness, our awareness of money and differences, the gap in things. Um, it's kind of a key piece of knowledge to have. And when we digitize everything, we don't get that same orientation. And I think it's really key in building that resilience. And and what do I, how do I recover from this? Or what do I do next? So there's you know, I teach a lot of my clients, you know, what are you working on now and what's going to be next and what's after that? And even that, you know, there's still some people that think future oriented and there's still 12 steps ahead of that. And there's people that live in the past. So they're like, still like, wait, what was number one? I'm not there yet. <laughs> 
And I think using that analog situation is a way to really help improve that particular skill. Are you finding it, it really helps? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and just being intentional about referring to it. Um, and yeah. Talking about it. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think everybody thinks the same way. I do think some people are more past and more people, some people are more future, but we live in a society that's very now in the present and saying we should live in the moment, but we can't because it's already the next moment. So just right. <laughs> it's another one of those big organizing myths, people. Um, so tell me what, what, what other areas do they need help with organization? Is it just time? and organizing their, their projects, or is it other areas as well? It's also creating a routine. Mm -hmm. um, it, and school usually has a routine, right? There's usually a schedule mm -hmm. that they are following. Um, but at home, sometimes parents need support with creating that routine. So what happens yeah. when you get home? Where do you put things? Um, once you walk through the door so that I don't miss the um, paper from school or this or that. Um, even for teenagers that are driving and coming home, like go ahead and put mm -hmm. your keys up here when you come in. Um, right. What does their evening look like? Um, what do their mornings look like? Creating that routine mm -hmm. is a big area where students need um, support. And then learning to manage their energy because we, mm. as parents and and schools, um, you would just put so many demands on work and assignments and extracurricular, um, and you know, being able to kind of prioritize all of those things that that you're asking a child to do. Um, that's yeah. still developing those executive function skills, right? Right. So there's you need time to daydream and use your imagination or you won't build that resilience and you right. won't be able to navigate relationships in the future without everything blowing up all the time. I mean, it and it's I think the digital age has really taken away a lot of that. But the expectations of parents and, and school communities, too, with all the extracurriculars, I can't I mean, I did a lot, but right. I look back and I'm like, and I laid on my bed every afternoon and just stared at the ceiling for an hour, you know, right, like right. they don't have that anymore. Right. Um, there was something else I was going to say about that. What was it? Oh, that integration of the physical space supporting the time management and the productivity and the routines. OK, everybody, I, you've heard me say this before. Routines set you free and they do not constrain your creativity or your impulsiveness. What they do is allow you to get the minimum essential things done so that you can have more time to do those creative and innovative things on the other side, right? Do you find that as well? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, personally and, you know, with clients. Yeah, it's yeah. how our brains work. They're, they've learned so much in the last 10 years about how our brains actually work, everybody. And this is the new stuff that may not have trickled into the education system yet. So I'm super excited that Tiffany's bringing this to her people. It's good. <laughs> now, how do we get it nationwide, right? Right. How do we get yeah. it everywhere? Um, so how do, do you make the connection for people, too, about how it helps their critical thinking about things? Or is it just kind of left to be that uh, that's a brilliant side effect of it? <laughs> No, we, we talk about that. You know, we're looking at mm -hmm. all of the executive function st skills, not just the ones that like, mainly focus on organization, right? We're looking mm -hmm. at um, the cognitive um, skills, like the flexibility and the problem solving, working memory. Mm -hmm. and yeah. But it's just important to point it out to the kid, right. to um, the parent, to the teacher, mm -hmm. you know, um, being a part of a student's um, team member, if, you know, if a child is in at another school, like, you know, being able to come to a parent teacher conference or give an updated report on what they're doing and, you know, oh, hear cool. information back, like that's so mm -hmm. important as well. So if you're working with someone who is supporting your child, like bringing everybody on that child's team. Yeah, it really, it really should take a village mm -hmm. and, and we need to do that. Like, right. I think that's the other piece we've gotten away from a little bit with our heads and our phones all the time. Exactly. <laughs> okay. 
So what um, do you think that you're getting enough support from parents when you're you're trying to instill these routines in the kids that that carry over into home is there resistance or i guess because they have to choose to come to your special little micro school they're pretty bought in but do you find that difficult to get buy in um no not at all like they are they want that right the parents are craving that support especially after okay we're year three into this thing. Let's not bring it up. This but, thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, after doing virtual learning, like the parents are mm -hmm. well aware that it's some things that, you know, I don't know how to work out. And I'm just glad somebody's over there helping them <laughs> and tell me what yeah. I can also do at home. Um, interestingly enough, I also have a, uh, another professional organizer's child um, at my school. Oh. So she definitely supports it. <laughs> That's fantastic. I love that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually just met, um, we have a couple of new organizers here in New Mexico and I met with them for coffee yesterday. And one of them comes from an educational background and she was like, yeah, when I put my kids back in school from, you know, she homeschooled them from a little while, for a little while. She was like, I realized all the other parents needed my help. <laughs> I'm like, yes, yes. Um, great. Well, we've got to take another break. I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network. And we're speaking with Tiffany today about how to support students through and their organizing endeavors. And it's all about the executive function people, how our brains work. We're going to get back into it right after the break. Get the Streamlined Paper Solution online course and learn quick ways to control interesting information. The link's here. <laughs> but let's start with what what tips do you have for um, parents about helping keep the kids organized long term? How, how do you help the parents support the kids? So um, one thing I tell parents is that you want to keep your child um, in the game, right? Mm -hmm. And so consistently supporting them until they achieve success. And that takes some patience. Um, yeah. That takes some understanding and so, some grace and, you know, one day at a time. Mm -hmm. um, and also realizing your your part is to be that coach. Um, mm. It's not to be the demander, right? But yeah. um, be able to coach them through what um, they need to do each day. And with gentle reminders, as gentle as you can be, um, once you reach your point of frustration. <laughs> um, yeah. Do you have some tips for helping parents become better champions mm -hmm. or coaches of their kids? Because it is a skill that right. I think, you know, I told them to, they should yeah. listen to me. I mean, like there's a lot of overcoming that right. concept when it right. comes to this, having patience about this stuff. It really has to be the holding space and the championing them and believing in them. Is there something yeah. you Help. I have a teenager. And um, what I've done is to, what I tell parents is to turn your statements into questions, mm. right? So, yeah. when, you know, when you see something out of place, um, the, the dirty clothes on the floor, when the, when the um, hamper is right there, okay, mm -hmm. um, just saying, like, where should these um, clothes be? Oh, great. Could you go ahead and, and take care of that for us? Thanks. I'm going to go ahead and fix dinner while you put that away. You know, mm -hmm. just asking questions versus saying, um, you know, I told you five times to put it in. You know, right. and, we, and we feel that way, right? So you yeah. just got to kind of breathe and say, turn the statement into a question and then let that guide the, the conversation. Oh, I love that. Yeah. That's a good one. I'm going to try that on my niece who always says, yes, in a minute. Yes, <laughs> right, because right, you told her. That's oh. her answer to everything these days. Yes, in a minute. Yeah. I'm like, do you know what a minute is? We have to watch the sweep <laughs> on the clock. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, because her minute is 10 minutes. Right. Um, so do you have any other things that work specifically with your own son that you discovered? like? by accident or in, in trying various 
methodologies you learned yeah. elsewhere. <laughs> yeah, well, the other one is that your morning routine begins at night. You talk mm. about you talk a lot about routine and systems. So yeah. um, not waiting until the morning to get you know looking for the device to take to school or the the other shoe, all of that that happens in the mornings. Um, having a place when you come in to actually put the backpacks or um, yeah. whatever that is, and then finding, um, having some type of check-in time as a family. So mm-hmm. maybe at 7 p.m., 8 p.m., whatever, you know, maybe at least an hour before bedtime mm-hmm. um, and saying, okay, Janie, you have ballet tomorrow. So you need to make sure that your ballet bag is also there with your backpack. Everybody right. put your devices um, on the charger. Or maybe right. that's what they did when they got home, so they're mm-hmm. not on it. And having it charged up and, you know, ready to put in the backpack. Um, yeah. You know, snacks. Snacks that are, you know, that, that, may, that even if they need to be refrigerated, that you have it already, you know, put in the container or... Um, during um, virtual learning, we had a little plastic shoe box in our mm-hmm. refrigerator. And every night, my son would put his snacks in there, mm-hmm. right? So one, because, you know, I have, a, I have a son, so I have to make sure he's not always <laughs> in the snacks, okay? Right. And, but <laughs> they having them at home, that's, all, that's something else we didn't talk about, um, about teaching at home. But, yeah. um, you know, having that place where they just go to. So if you're working um, mm-hmm. from home or you're busy with another child trying to get them set up for virtual, that child can go in and easily, you know, pick up their snack or get something, mm-hmm. something simple. Their juice box. Everybody has their own little um, shoe box in the refrigerator, you know. Yeah. So you just pull that out, pack your lunch bag in the morning and get out of there. I love it. Um, I really like the night before check-in thing too, because it works with how our brains work, everybody. Mm -hmm. It takes the stress out of sleep. So you sleep better. It allows your unconscious brain to work through any problems that you're anticipating for the next day. So you're more likely to breeze through it and you wake up knowing what you got to do and where the stuff is and there's no hectic anymore. It's just flow. So I love that. Yeah. yeah. And another good thing for parents is to um, do, that's when you do your homework check-in. Like most schools have some type of information mm-hmm. system where you can go online and see what assignments are due or whatever. Like yeah. let kids be responsible and independent to get their homework done, but they know every evening at 730, we're, I'm going to log on with mom and we're going to make sure I've completed everything. Right. Um, so get balancing that independence with you also um, checking in. Yeah, it's kind of like, um, you know, trust but verify. Yes, <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I, I trust you to do your thing, but we're going to double check and make sure so I know where we're at and what I need to do for you to help you. Um, right. So, yeah, that's really great. Um, what... From the the teacher's perspective, what else do you see that is a hiccup often for students staying organized? Is there something else that you see over and over that's like, we have to go over this again? Um, I would say, so teachers talk a lot about making thinking visible. Mm -hmm. Um, And we, we talk about that as far as like content. So you see the posters up on the wall so that they can always refer to something. Yeah. Um, but there's the same thing that needs to happen for supporting kids working memory of, you know, maybe putting a sticky note next to them about make sure to do these three things, a little checklist or um, mm-hmm. a small dry erase board. So helping kids to make their thinking visible. I love that concept. I don't think I've ever heard it phrased that way, but it, you know, well, we're going to talk more about this after the break, but <laughs> <laughs> there is a thing about our brains learn and absorb information through a variety of senses. And so it's a great way to make sure that that a couple different things are happening. We're going to talk a little bit more about that when we come back. I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino on the Streamlined Connection. I'm speaking with Tiffany Blassengame of Simple Organization about student organizing. And we'll check in after the break. Get the Streamlined Paper Solution online course and learn quick ways to control interesting information. The link's here. 
Um, so yeah, neuroscience again comes to the rescue in that for years, I don't know if you remember Tiffany, but we had this big kind of discussion in, in NAPO um, education committee about, is it true that people have different learning styles? And it turns out, no, it's different thinking styles and that we all learn the same way. Right, right. It's just, it's the transition on the other side about how we absorb the information. So Absolutely. yes, people do are visual learners. You're not a visual learner. You just like having the reinforcement of seeing it in front of you. Right. right. <laughs> which is this thinking visible, um, which I love. But also the the point about having a little post-it or a whiteboard, because that helps with the other senses, right? Right. So there's all those new studies. Um, let me just synopsis it and then see what your input is. But um, when you are actually taking notes or writing something down, you are seeing what's appearing on the paper. You are feeling it arrive on the whiteboard through the pen. You are hearing the pen or pencil or marker writing it. And um, you might be feeling it in another way as well. So there is a mind-body connection that's happening when you physically write a note that doesn't happen the same way when you're typing. Because when you type, you're thinking one letter at a time, not the concept. Right. Is that how you understand right. that as well? Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. It's, it's so important that you said that you write it, right? Because mm -hmm. the student needs to be able to write it. Yeah. Um, you know, as long as, you know, they are, you know, kindergarten, first grade may be a challenge. But yeah. um, the student needs to be able to write it. And I could you could also add in having them, um, you know, read it back to you after they yeah. wrote it down. And that's another way. Right. So they actually they thought about it. They wrote it down. They see it. They have to repeat it and actually say it. Mm -hmm. That's another way to make sure that that information yeah. they're able to retain the, that. The, the C1 T or um, what is it? Hear, hear one, see one, teach one. No. You so experiential right. learning. You watch someone do it, you do oh. it, and then you teach someone. Yes. Whatever. Yeah. There's I don't know. Med yeah. schools they have that weird right. little thing. It's muscle memory. There's so much muscle memory involved in being organized and navigating a day and your executive function. And if you don't do it correctly in terms of how your brain absorbs information, you're never going to quite grasp it. You might understand it in the moment, but you won't remember it. Um, well, we never remember the same thing twice, but <laughs> it helps you remember a more consistent version of the, the thing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Muscle oh memory, God. very important. It is. Um, and it's also really important. Like, I don't want to be just dissing on um, digital because it can be a really useful tool in terms of seeing mm -hmm. an experience um, and portraying that instead of just reading about it mm -hmm. or even reading and out loud, reading out loud teaches you differently because you're hearing a voice. Right. Um, all those different things that, that digital actually makes much easier, you know, <laughs> reading your Kindle at the same time you're listening to the audiobook. Right. Is, is another cool trick for learning faster. But, you know, I think we have to get to the place where we understand that we don't replace what we've been doing with the digital. We enhance we it. Be a part of it. Right. Yeah. Experience. Yeah. I love that. Okay. So what would you say are the most important things that um, you want parents and students to know about why organizing is important? Primarily is that the goal is to develop a habit um, you're, that you as a parent and uh, or as an educator, as a teacher, that you're going to need to help your child or your teenager to learn organization skills, that they're not just going to acquire them through observation or osmosis. They're not intentionally leaving things everywhere like they truly need the support and the coaching mm -hmm. um, and so if you can just focus on a couple of things at a time you know 
maybe the launch pad one month, maybe the homework check-ins another month, just begin to put clocks up, analog clocks mm -hmm. around and in, in, you know, family spaces that if you just take one step at a time and help them to develop the habit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and just tying back to habits, the reason habits are important is for energy conservation, people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it takes less energy because of the muscle memory that you've developed. Your body already knows what to do for that habit. Your brain's already focused on that aspect. So, you know, if you get in the habit of doing your reading and your writing and your arithmetic at the same time every day, it's going to be easier than if you have to like, oh, wait, I didn't do it. Now I got to change my brain to think about it. Right. 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 Yeah. Um, I'm so excited. <laughs> so there's a couple of reasons I'm excited. Um, but mostly I want to get your take on um, other organizers, not to diss people, but I have noticed a transition in like the last two years. And I don't know if it was COVID necessarily, but um, I've noticed more and more people are thinking about this neuroscience aspect to order and organizing and the conversations gotten a little deeper over the last few years with my fellow organizers and so i'm really excited that you're part of that conversation as well but have you noticed it too i have or, i think the yeah. information is just more available and, and accessible, yeah. you know through different platforms that you know people are beginning to study and read the books and yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there was a, a period, a slight period of time when I wasn't, um, or I had started learning this stuff and, and other people hadn't caught up and I was just, you know, I'm a brain science geek because my mom actually has a head injury. So I study a lot about what's happening in our brains, what's going yeah. on there. Um, so I'm excited that it's trickling out into the general public now and I think it's gonna make a big difference in all of our lives in the next few years or maybe generation. <laughs> You got to get it to the kids first, right? Um, we have to take one more quick break. I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino on the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network. And we're talking with Tiffany of Simple Organization and uh, all about student organizing. And we will be right back. Get the Streamlined Time Solution online course and learn easy ways to control your time and tasks. Links here somewhere. Down there, I think. Welcome back to the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network. Tiffany and I are just gonna wrap up a little bit about why we think student organizing is so important and what we can do to support students as they learn to be better organized people. What 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 are your parting thoughts about it? Um, so the reason why I do this work is because I want um, kids teens to really grow up to be able to be productive citizens. And we say mm -hmm. that a lot, but we, when we focus on the word productive, it's not always about learning a skill or, you know, what you learn in college, but it's also mm -hmm. about how you show up in the world and how you manage your time and your energy so that mm -hmm. you can have some form of harmony between taking care of your family, your work, and then your civic responsibilities as well. So I believe that organization and time management plays into all of that. Um, mm -hmm. So that's why it's so important for me to me. Yeah, I love that concept of, of productive doesn't necessarily mean busy. It mm -hmm. means working on the right things in the right time. And right. it applies to everybody, no matter what their skill set is that they're going to take out into their life. Absolutely. Um, and I think it applies to, you know, everything from are you productive raising a, a responsible child or are you productive running around shopping all day long like what right <laughs> not to call anyone out but is that you um, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um you know there is something to that and the transformation that can happen when you realize how these things all fit together so thank you so much for sharing about that um so you guys tiffany has a cool online um, course portal on Teachable. Um, the link will be in the description for everybody, so you can check that out. Um, I feel like there's student and parent and general, yeah. right? Yeah. It's a little online school um, yeah. with 
tips for students and tips for parents. Yeah, it looked like really great program. I have one queued up to watch later today. I ran out of time yesterday to watch it before you were on, but I'm excited to check it out. Um, I also want to point out that all of these things apply to running a business as well. Can you prep for tomorrow, tonight, before you shut down your computer? Can you set yourself up for success by having your snacks or your meals planned out the day before. What can you do? What little bits of information can you take to help your work day as well as your home life and your student um, be more productive? Because productivity looks different to a lot of people, but it is never about being busy. It's about working on the right things in the right time in the most effective way. So whoever that is, whatever your job, whatever you're calling, all of that comes together. Um, don't forget, you can always reach out to me with questions, comments, concerns at miriam at morethanorganized.net. And next week on the show, we have Hazel Thornton of Organized for Life. And she is actually and beyond. Uh, she does a lot of genealogy and uh, photo organizing. So we're going to be talking about how to organize your family's story. And um, I'm super excited about that. Tell all your friends because it's always more fun to get organized together. And as always, there's a lot of res resources and um, offerings and ideas at morethanorganized.net. And I can't wait to uh, see you again next week. In the meantime, have a delightful day.